Okay, so before I start talking about this week's chapter of Black Clover, I do want to quickly talk about what's going on in the Attack on Titan manga currently. Now, I'm about like, I want to say maybe four, probably five chapters behind. But even though I'm so far behind, I did want to quickly take a look and see exactly where the story had developed, you know, pr uh, past where I stopped reading. And, you know, obviously, of course, spoilers ahead for anyone who actually is reading the chapter monthly by monthly and just hasn't had a chance to read this month's chapter yet. You know, just mute the video, you know, until this image goes away on the screen. If I remember to do it, I'll try to put a link in the description down below a time slot where it actually says exactly when I start talking about the actual chapter for Black Clover. But anyway, if I don't put it in there, just mute the video until you see this image go away. But anyway, for you guys who don't mind spoilers, when I was flipping through the pages, I didn't actually read any of the dialogue. I was just kind of looking at the images, trying to get like a rough idea exactly what was going on in the chapter. But when I was flipping through the pages, I ended up coming across something that was a big reveal to me. Something I've been calling for and waiting to happen for a long time in the series. And I'm actually very mad at myself for spoiling it. And that is that I basically ended up finding out that Annie is back. Somehow, someway, Annie ended up out of her crystal and she's now back. And it looks like she's actually working with Armin, Mikasa, and the rest of the good guys to face off against whatever threat they're currently going against. So, I'm extremely excited now to get back into Attack on Titan. I had kind of taken a break from it just because of the fact that I'd fallen behind two chapters due to my work schedule. And I hadn't had a chance to actually just sit down and read them. But now that I actually am really excited to find out that Annie is back, I'm going to try to catch up. If I can do it, I'm going to try to get back into doing Attack on Time reviews. Doesn't matter if anyone watches them or not. If I can do it, I'll just do it because I enjoy doing it. But if you are someone who actually did enjoy my Attack on Time reviews back when I did them, you can possibly look forward to me doing them again starting with next month's chapter. Okay, so there's actually two problems I noticed from reading the chapter, and these problems actually just stem from the fact that I'm reading them on a fan translated site. And that's the first one that we don't for some reason get the colored cover page and the first color page that we were promised at the end of last week's chapter. Which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because of the fact that we've gotten them for previous chapters that had cover that had uh, color cover pages. So I'm not exactly sure why we didn't get it for this week's chapter. But I guess I'm just going to have to wait until the official chapter to release in order to actually see that. And the other thing that I noticed from this chapter that's kind of a problem is the fact that the second page for this week's chapter is also the second page for last week's chapter. So if you're reading the chapter and you saw that page and you're like, this kind of looks familiar, that's the reason why they, for some reason, re-uploaded page two of last week's chapter onto page two of this chapter. But anyway, getting into the actual chapter, it picks up exactly where the last one left off with Asta and Gouch's combined attack heading straight for Dante. And we all pretty much thought that in order for Dante to stand a chance of either blocking this attack or dodging it in any way, he would have to activate his dark form. And we weren't disappointed. With the official second page of this chapter, we actually do get to see finally Dante's dark form in action. And what's interesting about this is the fact that in order for Dante to activate his dark form, he had to use 50% of his demon's powers. Versus when Zeno used it, he had to go up to 55%. And the conclusion I kind of came to in my mind, and I could be completely wrong about this, I don't know. We had to wait until we get more information from Tabata exactly on how these dark forms work, especially when it comes to the dark triad. But from my understanding of it is that the dark forms kind of like Super Saiyan. If you go back and watch the original Super Saiyan and or original Dragon Ball Z, I should say, in order for Goku and the other Saiyans to activate Super Saiyan, it takes a lot more energy for them to do it when they first learn how to transform. But once they gradually get more accustomed to it, it takes a lot less energy and are able to withstand the forms for a lot longer. And, it's kind of, and that's kind of what I think is going on right now with Dante and the Dark Triad. Is that, that basically the longer and more accustomed they are to using the Dark Form, the easier it is for them to activate it. And that's why for someone like Zeno, he had to use 55% of his power in order to activate it. Because of the fact that he, as we saw, uh, I want to say prior to the time skip, the first time we actually was officially introduced to the Dark Triad, we had found out that he had just recently gotten his demonic powers. So because of the fact that he hasn't had them that long... It would make sense that it would take more effort for him in order to activate his dark form versus Dante, who obviously as a leader of the Dark Triad most likely had his demonic powers the longest, so he's the most accustomed to using them and is able to activate them with a lot less effort. Now, the design for Dante's dark form is actually kind of interesting. Just like how Zeno had two horns on his head, Dante has the same thing, except for unlike Zeno's horns being white and black, Dante just has straight up two black horns. And also kind of looks like that Zeno's horns might be, when I was going back and comparing the two, it looks like Zeno's horns actually might be a little bit bigger, but that's just that could just be because of the fact that the demon that Zeno's contracted to has bigger horns than Dante. But the fact that we actually get to see the two of them have completely different designs 
goes forward with the idea that or confirms pretty much the suspicion that each one of the Dark Triad members is contracted to a different demon. Now, when it comes to Dante's normal design, I really, really, really hated, the more I looked at it, really hated that stupid crown he was wearing. And I was hoping at some point during the fight, he, it would just end up getting knocked off and destroyed and we'll just never see it again. But now that I'm looking at it between his two horns, for some reason that crown actually works now. It, just, it, it looks visually pleasing for some reason now. I can't explain it. I just now I'm 100% okay with the crown. Like, I'll put up with it in his normal form. If it can look as badass as it does right now in his dark form. But other than that, his dark form doesn't really change his appearance that much. His uh, cloak becomes full black. Interestingly enough, he gets actually two full black wings. Only uh, Zeno who only got the one. So that's kind of interesting. And there's two other notable changes to his appearance that I kind of want to make notice of. The first thing is that the mark on his forehead actually now fully extends down his face just to a little bit past his eyes, which is actually the same thing we saw with Zeno. His, the mark on his forehead kind of extended down as well, a little bit over more on his forehead and down past his eyes as well, which is actually kind of interesting. And I actually have a little bit of a theory on that that I'll get to a little bit later. But the other thing I noticed about Dante's new design when it comes to his dark form is that on his chest now, there seems to be some kind of like demonic symbol. And I couldn't really see the full symbol because of the fact that his sash that he was wearing kind of covers it a little bit. But just based on what we could see in the chapter, I tried to look up some demonic signs, some demonic symbols, see if I could find anything that was similar to it. I didn't come across anything myself, but let me know in the comment section down below if you, if you happen to come across something that looks very close to that so I can do a little bit more research on it, see if there's anything that kind of could hint at to what Dante's abilities going forward. Uh, further on in the series would be in connection to that symbol or has anything to do with the demon that he's tied to okay so yeah one last thing i actually want to mention about the dark triad before i go on to exactly what happened in this week's chapter and that's basically i kind of came up with a theory when it comes to the marks on her forehead when i was flipping back and forth between the two designs for their dark forms and all right for one thing i'm pretty sure we all figured out by now that the marks that each of the dark triad that dante is you know have on her foreheads are kind of indicators or kind of like the seal that is basically their contract with their demon, that's exactly where their power actually comes from. And if you notice, those seals actually kind of hint at exactly what their demonic forms are going to look like. Because if you look at Zeno, when it comes to this mark, it's on the left side of his head. Well, for him, it's the left, for us, it's the right side of his head when we're looking at him. But if you notice, that seal is on the left side, same as his black horn and his one black wing. But when it comes to Dante, he has that seal across his entire forehead. And he also has two black horns and two black wings. So it seems like that basically when it comes to the seal, that seal indicates exactly where they're, at the very least, it indicates where the wings are going to be at on their body. So since Zeno has it on his left side, he has a left wing. Since Dante has it all across his entire forehead, he has two wings. And I'm guessing that when we actually get to see Vanica's face fully not being covered by the hair and the eye patch, which conveniently enough is just enough to cover the right side of her head to where the mark most likely would be. We we'll actually get to find out that she ends up having that mark on the right side and she'll end up having at least one black wing on her right side. So yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure that mark is basically just a seal that represents her contract with the demon and it kind of indicates exactly where, at least in her current form, their wings will be when they activate their dark form. So I was actually going to spend the rest of the review kind of talking about the fight that we get in this chapter, but looking back on it, there really wasn't much of a fight. For, I mean, from like the second page all the way to the last two pages of the chapter, it's pretty much just kind of showcasing the fact that the Black Wolves don't really stand a chance against Dante, at least they currently don't. And on top of that, it was kind of showcasing the fact that Dante knows they don't stand a chance. So you get this kind of impression throughout the entire chapter, just like you did in the last one, that he's really not taking the fight all that seriously. Because, I mean, alright, after the second page after he turns into his dark form, we see in order to dodge the attack that, you know, Gouch and uh, Asa sent at him, Dante creates this like, kind of like spatial field around him. I'm not exactly how, I'm not exactly sure how gravity magic can work to do this kind of like dodge attack that he was doing, but somehow he ended up doing it. Asa's attack goes flying right through him, doesn't do any damage, and immediately after Asa realizes what's going on, Dante puts a foot on his shoulder Send them plumbing in down to the ground, creates a crater, and literally just holds Asa there for a majority of the chapter, for pretty much the remainder of the chapter. Asa's just on the ground, while Dante's kind of just taunting him. 
Now, I'm not going to get too much into the dialogue that we get between these two characters in this chapter, just because the fan translated version isn't that great. So, I'm going to wait till the official one comes out to exactly see what Asa and Dante were actually saying to each other. But from the, what I got from at least from the fan translated version, it seems like Dante was trying to convince Asa that because his demonic powers come from hate and other kind of dark emotions, he's more fitted to be a villain. And Asa told him that basically instead of being a villain, he uses those dark emotions to gain new powers in order to help out other people and actually become a good hero. And again, I don't want to get too much into the dialogue because it's not that great in his translation. But I do want to say that just based off of what I could kind of infer Asa was trying to say in his translation, that I do agree with his mentality more than I do with Dante's. So there's a moment in the chapter when actually Vanessa sends Rogue out to help out Asta, and immediately Dante just kind of ups his power to 60% and completely erases Rogue. I mean, Rogue is just gone now. I'm sure Rogue's obviously going to come back later on, but he completely gets rid of her for right now. So, yeah, that's the thing now. And you know what? While he's at 60%, he just kind of casually just cleaves off and sends flying the head of the Bible headquarters, so Henry's out to fight now. Then he uses his gravity magic to just pin Vanessa, Gouch, and Grey to the Bible headquarters, creates a stone sword, and just casually stabs Gouch through the chest with it. Now, I mean, I don't think any of us actually think that Gouch is going to end up dying from this. It's pretty much just a fake death just to give Asta his own Super Saiyan 2 Gohan moment, which actually kind of works, and it seems like that was kind of Dante's plan overall, to anger Asta enough to actually get him to unleash more of his power. But anyway... Asta does end up activating a more advanced, I would guess, version of his dark form, where it's really not that different, it's just kind of taking on the darkness or the black form, it's kind of taking on more of his body now. It seems like he might be getting a little bit of a wing on his other side as well, and it seems like he's more out of control than he usually is. When he activates his dark form, it seems like he's kind of just become like a wild beast now, ready to attack against Dante, kind of like how when Naruto would originally activate his nine-tailed fox aura. He would kind of lose control. It seems like Asa's kind of having a similar effect. Now, what's really interesting about the fact, or over the scene when he does activate this, is that prior to him actually getting this new transformation, we get this real quick, just like one panel flashback of a character getting stabbed and most likely killed in front of Asta. And this is actually kind of what really triggers him activating this new advanced version of his black form. But what's really interesting about this flashback is the fact that I don't recognize that character. I don't know who that is, I can't recognize what scene that was from, so I'm guessing that this is actually really our first real hint of Asta's backstory, like where, like his parents, I'm thinking that that person we see in his flashback is probably his dad, and this is kind of like a memory from when he was a child or from a baby, kind of like how we saw with Yuno a few chapters ago when he met Ralph. So if that actually is an indicator of what's going on, if this is actually the first scene that we actually get of Asta's backstory. I'm actually excited because it's been a long time, you know, everyone's been theorizing exactly what Asa's backstory could possibly be, and now that we're kind of getting hints toward it, I'm excited to see more. But anyway guys, that's pretty much it for the chapter, I really wish I could talk more about that quick little flashback we get for Asta, the only thing else there is really to talk about it because we don't know who the character is or what scene that is, the only other thing to really talk about is the fact that in that blackness that we get from the flashback, just underneath like the character we see dying, we see like a little shape of a heart. I'm not sure exactly what it's kind of indicating. If you can think of a theory as to what that is, let me know in the comment section down below. But yeah, it's pretty much it for the chapter. I'm not exactly sure. Even with this new form that Asa's activating, I doubt it's going to give him the edge over Dante because Dante's still only using up to 60% of his power. He still has another 20% at that to use against Asta. So I don't see them winning. Now, maybe, maybe once Yami shows up, they might have a chance. But I'm pretty sure that once Yami ends up showing up, it's just going to be putting himself on the fucking chopping block for Dante to just kidnap along with Vanessa. Because he pretty much does kind of confirm in the chapter that he does intend on taking Vanessa as his wife. So, like I said in the last review, one of these two are going with him at the end of this. Most likely Yami. I'm thinking maybe both of them at the same time. I don't know. But that's it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop me a like. Subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Comment down below your thoughts and theories, and I'll catch you guys next week. Peace.